everybody welcome back so today of course you guessed it another unboxing however this is one that I've actually not bought anything from this company before this is a first for me uh, most of the time uh, I'm either not fast enough to get some of these items kind of like most and crate um, just because of the high demand um, but um, or you know I just can't afford it or something else however in this case um, this is an acquisition from Empire Arms from Dennis Crow, uh, guy that runs um, Empire Arms down there in Florida, um, and he recently had a new listing of firearms that he had put out there for sale. He had a lot of M1 carbines um, in that email. Uh, you can actually sign up for his newsletter. You can submit your FFL information to him and sign up for that newsletter, and then every time he gets new uh, firearms and he posts them uh, you'll get an email off the website link and it'll show photos pricing all sorts of information um, so I wasn't fast enough to really get the M1 carbine that I wanted however I was fast enough to get uh, the next closest one and what we're going to unbox for you today is one that is a national postal meter marked M1 carbine I do believe um, before shipping and taxes and all that fun stuff, I think I paid right at, um, let's see, the cost on this one was $14.75. Uh, so yes, it is expensive, but this was kind of a bucket list gun that I've been wanting for a while. Of course, if you guys saw one of my past videos, you know that I have a um, auto ordinance new manufactured M1 carbine. Um, and there's really nothing wrong with that. It's just, um, you know, it's it's a new manufacturer, so there's not a lot of history uh, associated with it, unfortunately. Um, and quite frankly, um, you know, in terms of a finished perspective, I just think that um, I think that the the World War II era ones are just nicer. I mean, that's just just my just one person's opinion here. I can just get into this box. I'm having a real fun time here. Okay. But she's packaged quite well in here. Um, one of the interesting things, I'm trying not to make a huge mess, one of the, uh, trying to see, Oh, very cool. <laughs> Little piece of swag. Let me set this aside. Um, one of the interesting things about this is um, this one is not import marked. Um, I think it did come with. Oh, did not. Well, I can't tell. Yes, did come with a sling. And I also got the certificate. Wow. A CMP certificate of authenticity for this one. So this was a purchase from the CMP originally before uh, it was sold. And the story that I saw on uh, Dennis's email, or maybe it was his website, was there was a gentleman that bought a lot of uh, surplus, or not surplus, but CNRs from him. Well, the gentleman recently died, and I guess the family was selling off the collection, um, and this was one of said uh, firearms. I just thought this was kind of cool. A little pen. It says this pen has been stolen from Empire Arms. <laughs> nice little piece of swag. Uh, I, that, that makes me chuckle. I like cool little things like that. He did say that he would throw in an original, I believe he said original, um, 15 round mag. There's a lot of tape on that. Let's see if we can get into this mag. Uh, you know what? We're just, we're just going to cut this open. Maybe. PM and a C. I have no idea what that means, but it's on the floor plate, it's on the follower, and it's on the mag body. Looks relatively nice, though. 
Definitely not CMP, but PMC, I, I, I don't have a clue. Um, I do know this particular rifle, um, I think it had a throat erosion, a muzzle erosion, I can't even remember. I think it gauged it too. Um, you guys will see in the top left, uh, kind of the description on it. I cannot remember from memory because, as you all full well know, my memory is absolutely terrible. Um, also, down in the description, you're going to see a couple of links um, for some collector's web pages, basically for historical reference, YouTube historical reference. Um, on these M1 carbines, uh, particularly uh, the manufacturers, uh, the number that were built, how many parts were made in house, you know, all that fun stuff. How even I think one of them even has information on how they did um, when they submitted them for military trials. So a lot of cool or some pretty cool, uh, neat little references there. Um, Get this out of the way. Okay. So here we are. And yes, this is a National Postal National Postal Meter cartouched stock. So it's likely this is original stock. I guess it could have been replaced at some point. Of course, it does have a late war style. Um, Sling or uh, sling swivel, whatever you want to call it. It does have a Marlin marked barrel with it's not year marked, but it's a Marlin barrel, and it is common knowledge that Marlin did uh, manufacture barrels uh, that were used by National Postal Meter. Of course, you see that fully adjustable rear sight. Uh, you see that flat top bolt, uh, you know, which is correct for this for the year of manufacture. But it looks quite nice. Bluing looks real nice. Uh, wood looks really nice. Don't see any major issues with the wood. Uh, one thing that collectors, like anybody watching, may not like, um, it does have the cross bolt style safety. It does not have the flip lever. Uh, this is one that was not retrofitted. Um, appears to be in just wonderful, wonderful shape. There is, and I just noticed this. Hmm, well that's unfortunate. There is a slight, ever so slight, crack in that stock. I'll try to get better pictures of it. Um, so you guys can see that. That kind of stinks. I wonder if I can take that apart and glue it back. I may do that. Not real sure. I'll have to take a close look at that one. Um, if not, you know, we may just leave it as is because this is probably this is likely not one that I'm going to be shooting much at all, especially because of its historical significance. I don't suspect that that's going to cause any problems there, but it could. Um, but of course, this one is a uh, looks like it's a four million serial number range. This one, uh, I believe, would put it sometime in late uh, September, October, 1943. But all in all, it's a very nice looking M1 carbine. Trying to see if there's any oddities in regards to the trigger guard, butt plate, anything like that. I don't see anything else that's you know, too crazy. Handguard does look like it doesn't quite match the lower, like it was replaced at some point. But I didn't expect to get something you know that's absolutely perfect. I just wanted a nice um, original M1 carving, and this is what I got. <clears throat> So anyway, um, just to give you guys a heads up, you know, just if you're interested um, in the kind of stuff like this, um, I know Dennis puts out a whole bunch of stuff all the time. He's always traveling the country, putting different um, 
or uh, buying uh, different different guns and stuff to put out there on his website for sale. Um, so I mean, he makes trips all the time, all over the country. So if you're interested in stuff like this, make make sure you sign up on his website for his newsletter, and you know you might be able to you know snag a nice M1 carbine. I know for a while, I know a while back he had some 1903 A3s, he had um, M1 Grands, he had um, Model 1917 rifles. I mean, just you name it. He's always got all kinds of stuff. He also does pistols as well. So if you're so inclined. Uh, make sure you sign up for his newsletter, submit your FFL information. He's got a strange uh, ordering process that might seem strange to us, but to, like he stated, it was his best way to prevent any sort of fraud or anything like that uh, on your credit card information. Um, so be aware of that. That is listed on his website, how you go about doing that. Um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, you know, that one little one little crack kind of bothers me, but I think I can probably I can't tell if it's been glued back or not. That's what I can't tell. Um, and it may have been. I just won't know until I take it out of there. The only thing that cued me into it was something right here. As you can tell, which I'll get a picture of that. Which I'm pushing on it and it's not moving, so I'm assuming this was probably repaired. So I'm not, you know, terribly concerned with that. Um, looking at the bore off camera, which, like I said, I'll insert pictures. The bore is just phenomenal. Um, so I'm super happy with this. Like I said, I probably need to go through this a little bit more, take a closer look at it. Um, you know, there could have been, as with any military reworked rifle, there could have been any number of things replaced at any point in time on it. Um, you know, like this, like this sling swivel on the front, barrel band, whatever you want to call it, or the barrel band. Um, you know, obviously that's a late war thing. Um, and we do know that a lot of these set push button safeties were swapped over to a lever style uh, late, later in the war. Uh, this was not. So, you know, it's just an interesting, interesting rifle. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, this is one that looks really nice. It's not shot out, it's not import marked, and that's basically what I wanted. I wanted something that was as, I guess you could say, close as possible to original issue. Um, so this is pretty much as close as I came to. Um, so there you have it. Like I said, if you're interested in his website, make sure you check out uh, Empire Arms. Um, and also make sure you check out the, the uh, description or check out the links in the description area below. If you want to find more information about the history of the M1 carbine, who manufactured it, how many were manufactured, uh, different tidbits of inf historical information. So anyway, thanks for watching guys. and. Once again, thank you to my subscribers, everybody that likes, comments, and shares. Make sure you hit that bell notification if you want to find out when I put a new video or get notified when I put a new video out on stuff like this or just any deals in general. But as always, thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, you guys have a great day.